me know after we're done, even if it's like tomorrow or something like that, especially if it's before I edit <laughs> on, on the Zoom video. Yeah. Well, just know that it's fresh. So it, fresh. It sh shaved it down as in what there's, but like, what does that mean? So like, there's only half, half of it left. I don't so, know, I'm waiting for her to like just bang it on the microphone. She's leaving. So. <laughs> Back in the day, I fell on my face and chipped half my tooth off. And so it was like basically see through and bigger than this one. Now this tooth is bigger than this one. It's just teeth, man. <laughs> That's my only life update. So welcome movie lovers <laughs> to In Love With Movies. In I'm Danny and I'm Nick and we have another person here. Who are you? Uh, my name is Matt. Oh, it's Matt. Hey, Matt. Yeah. Oh, hi, Matt. Hey. <laughs> uh, Matt is joining us from California, right? That's where yeah. you are. Southern California. SoCal. And um, Matt, how did we meet you since, you know, we're BFFs now. Let's talk about um, we, our love story. When biffles. did we first meet? Biffles, straight biffles. Well, so uh, we were in Cancun. My husband's a nurse. Uh, JetBlue awarded him free uh, plane tickets uh, for being a healthcare worker during COVID. And so as our first post-COVID kind of trip. Vaccination. Once, once we were, yeah, vaccination. Um, <laughs> we, we, went, we went to Cancun. I was worried because the next day we saw you guys in the restaurant, in the breakfast restaurant. I was like, I don't think they want to hang out with us. <laughs> I was just worried that that you didn't and then we're like we'll see you by the pool later and then you just welcomed us in i was gonna say she legit kept discouraging me being like they don't actually want to hang out with us now. they were just being nice and i was like i'm telling you we have made a true friendship connection and well, here and you we're, are no, well, we, we were doing the same thing on our end we're like are we hanging out with them too much do they feel pressured to hang out with like we need to get make sure they know their space but but also let them know that we do want to hang out if they if they want to hang out so it's, yeah totally a, a will they won't they Ooh. Uh, and, and and the breakfast uh remember that this was the timeshare breakfast so we were already with our timeshare yeah, agents right. so that's why we did but otherwise we would have asked to, to join your table yeah and then we were following you on the tour and i was like oh yeah they're gonna think we're stalking them and well yeah, no well, that's when it, that's when got, well that's when it got weird because we arrived like within hours of each other we're staying the exact same dates then our timeshare tours were like right next to each other so it was like like, even if we didn't interact at the table last night, we would have, uh, you know, ran into each other today. So it was definitely like a fate bring us together. Yeah. The totally universe. Agree. Yeah, I agree. So thank you for being on our podcast. Yeah, we're happy yeah. to have you. Man. <laughs> and to be fair, <laughs> well, we asked four of them, four of you yeah. Mexican friends of ours. <laughs> Uh, we'll cut that out of the I podcast. Say, <laughs> uh... <laughs> I meant to say friends we met in Mexico. <laughs> And only one was up for the challenge. Yeah. Well, yeah. Everyone, at, everyone at first acted like they wanted to do it. And then yeah. when it became a reality, they all backed Yeah, away. yeah. When it was us sitting around drinking, everyone's like, yeah, I'm totally into that. <laughs> yeah. And then the moment I'm like, all right, so when do you guys want to be on? Matt was yeah, like, so, so let, let, let's pick a movie. Let's pick a date. <laughs> yeah. Well, but that's okay. Because now you get to represent all gay men in the entire universe <laughs> yes. as we ask you questions about the between straight well, and gay I mean, that, that, that's how I live my life normally. So <laughs> I, I, I walk into a room and I take the stage. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, oh, it's on YouTube now, but I was going to say podcast listeners, Matt's wearing just glitter, just straight glitter. I think it's body <laughs> glitter. It's not actually clothes. It's just body glitter. And then he's got these nipple rings that are like rhinestones. I'm pretty sure if you're gay, you're just born that way. You just glitter all the time, right? Isn't that, that's correct, right? Yeah, the, the womb kind of glitters you on the way out. <laughs> all right, all joking aside, we did bring Matt on because he was kind enough to come speak to us. And, and we just, we are a straight couple, obviously, but we have uh, other gay friends and things of that nature. And we, love is love. We love love here on this podcast, uh, but we can't really speak to the experience of, happening to have that love within a relationship that happens to be with someone of the same sex so we thought for the month of pride we would go ahead and find a guest that could give us a little bit more of that perspective 
And we're just being selfish and we wanted to see Matt again. We miss him. <laughs> That's really Aww. the truth. We're, yeah. we're, I'm, I'm resisting the urge just to keep talking about Cancun, but I figure the listeners <laughs> probably yeah. don't okay, care Okay, we much. get it. You went to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for my vaccination too. <laughs> <laughs> So with that, I, I will give the disclaimer, Matt, we're going to have a little conversation about Matt's experiences. All joking aside, Matt does not speak for every single gay individual in the world. He just happens to have the perspective that we can't provide, uh, but he is not the end all be all. So no one uh, add us based on that in terms of saying like, that is not true. You're making broad generalizations about all gay people. Uh, anytime we do that here, just like when we make broad generalizations about straight people and how silly we are, <laughs> we're doing it mostly in jest, so. Um, should we explain what our podcast is? We didn't do that part. I mean, you kind of went straight into other things. I guess you could take a moment and say that. Yeah, we've been going for 20 minutes, why not? Hey Nick, what's, what's our podcast? <laughs> our podcast is In Love With Movies. What do we do? <laughs> well, we try to pick some topic of related to love and the nature of love and relationships. And then we also talk about that amongst ourselves and with a guest, as well as a movie that means something and then is kind of maybe become a person or made us the person that we are today. And it's a movie that we love. So, you know, love in life and love of movies in love with movies. So before we talk about the mushy part, Matt, what movie did you pick? So listeners. Listen to the love part. Then if you haven't seen this movie, which you probably haven't, turn it off and go watch it. What movie is it? <laughs> uh, so the movie's called The, the Way He Looks. Um, you can get it on Amazon Prime. It's a 2014 uh, Brazilian film uh, that I first saw at Outfest, the LGBTQ plus film festival here in Los Angeles. All right, I'm going to pump the brakes right there just because that's leading into a second part of the podcast where we're going to want your love story with it. So, okay. But it is a fantastic movie, uh, and I told them to not to, to not read anything about it, to just go in and watch it blind, because that's how I watched it. And it's always so refreshing to watch like a really, you know, really well done and unique movie when you don't know anything about it going in. So the entire experience is a surprise. Uh, great. And I am genuinely very excited to talk about that movie. Uh, and listeners, I think you should feel excited to listen about it and you should go watch the movie first because there is a correct order in which you should watch the movies we discuss and then listen to our podcast um but before we get to that i wanted a little bit of your love story so we've gotten your love story with us we've gotten a little bit of a preview of your love story with the movie why don't you tell us a little bit of your love story with your husband brian so walk us through the sort of story of you all meeting where you first met each other what was your courtship like uh, and I just use that because the dating is what I mean by that. And then, you know, your marriage and, and give us kind of a, a five minute summary of all of the important points. Five minutes. That's a long time. No, <laughs> no time limit. Just tell us. Uh, no, 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 I, I, well, I need a time limit. I could talk about this for like two hours. Probably. That's what I was going to say. We okay. could fill the entire I, I know I could talk about you for that long. So. Oh, stop it. I could talk about me for that long, too. <laughs> five minutes, Matt. Go. OK, um, so. So I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out, figure out where I'm going to start. I guess I'll start at, I'll start at this place. Hopefully my parents aren't listening to this. <laughs> no. Start at the beginning. A very good place to start. Sorry. So, so going into 2008, I had a bunch of New Year's resolutions, and one was to find a boyfriend. Um, I came out in 2004, kind of halfway through, through college. Okay. Um, and uh, like the most... Uh, the longest relationship I had had it was like 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 six dates with the guy um, and just every relationship it, it just wasn't working out you know it was young it was hard, hard to meet people hard to find like the right places to meet people but I was like okay this is what this is gonna be one of my like goals for the year uh, and, and one thing I thought I was like maybe I am like a little judgmental with guys I don't give them a chance so I wanted so I was like I'm going to give guys more of a chance now because uh, you've never been in a relationship you don't know how that process is supposed to work maybe you know he says something that turns you off on, on the second date, but like maybe he'll change, you know, two years later, that won't be an issue. So um, this is before dating apps, before Grindr, before Tinder and all that. Um, so there were- the How did you find people? I know. Tell us. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that's right. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> well, so, well, so the options were, were like gay.com and I was just- Wait, I, 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 I'm sorry if I'm really ignorant here. Is there literally a gay.com? And that yeah, was like a I, I, dating I website? I haven't, I haven't been to it in a long time, but it was it was like 
it was kind of a social networking site where you could put up a picture of yourself in, in, in a profile. Um, huh. And even though I was fully out, I was still just, that just kind of made me nervous to have like my face on gay.com. So anybody could like look me up and find out my sexuality. Uh, uh, and so you, like the other big option was Craigslist. And you know, these, <laughs> these ads in Craigslist are like, here's a picture of my dick, suck my cock tonight. Uh, you know, so it was grinder fire. before grinder. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> Sorry if you heard that. Our cat just like <laughs> fell over a bunch of boxes. Sorry, let's continue, Matt. All right, so Craigslist. Yeah, and I was. Uh, it, it's just, so. My idea was just I was like, well, I'm just gonna post a really nice message on here and see if someone just just wants to go on a date. You know, I'm not beating up to to have, to have sex or anything. Uh, you know, let, let's just at dinner. And I did like a little blurb of like where I was at my New Year's resolution or whatever. Um, but, it, but, but that got a, a few responses. Um, and, and of course, then people thought it, some were like, they thought this was like a role play thing. So I was like, no. Uh, then, <laughs> like, no, I actually am looking for a boyfriend. Yeah. You are a nice guy. A New Year's resolution. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, a couple of people responded. There's this, it, but then like this one didn't go well. Then this one didn't go well. Uh, so there's this one guy I, I found, what, you know, I had this. I was a software developer, uh, still building up that, that, that career, but still but had my interest in filmmaking and art. Um, and so this one guy, he was uh, training to be an acrobat. And so I found that really fascinating because I felt like he was, he was, to me, we're both trying to like find, you know, the, these new artistic passions. Um, but this guy, he was like just such a diva, selfish prick. Like, oh my God, when I think of, when I think of him, I can't stand him. But I was like, I was like, Name he's fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we, I go, go on a date with him, just it would not go well. And then, like, and then I, I, but I reached out and asked him to go again. He said yes. I didn't know why. <laughs> it's like, uh, and so we, we did like like four of these. They were all horrible. But uh, and I, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll do j just just one more. And I was like, well, and let's let's change the setting of the date. Um, so uh, at, at Berkeley, I saw there was a lecture by Charles Dawkins, um, and so. I was like, okay, let, let's go to the lecture and then we could get a meal afterwards and then we could talk about the lecture. It'll, like that'll be more of a platform where we can have like a more intelligent conversation and awesome. stuff. That is so, a, I love that. So we, we, we go, we, we do that. Um, and just, just before the lecture, just everything he's talking about, it's just, it's so annoying. And he's talking about like other guys he's interested in. I was like, this is, this was so stupid. This is such a mistake. Like, <laughs> why am I here? Well, and also I was like, oh, if the date goes bad, well, at least I can see this lecture. <laughs> <laughs> So we're walking back to the car um, and then he goes, oh, so um, I, I have this party here, uh, here in Berkeley that I'm gonna go to. Uh, like, if, if you just wanna go home, that's fine. Otherwise, I guess you wanna go. And I was so <laughs> mad. I was like, you fucking agreed to go to this lecture just <laughs> so I would give you a ride to this party. And I, was, and I knew he didn't want me to come. And I was like, fuck you, I'm gonna come. So I go to this party, walk in the door and it's, it's all gay men. Was, he, he didn't even say that because he wasn't trying to sell the party to me. And I was like, oh, this is great. And so I find out he's volunteering at the Berkeley Free Clinic and this is a party for the Berkeley Free Clinic. And I was like, oh my God, this is my dream. There's all these interesting gay men here. They all volunteer. So the, there's a they're probably, yeah, they're probably good, good, good people. Um, a couple of them were, were really hot. Uh, so, and, of course, and we walk in the door and he like, like after five seconds, he just like walks across the room and starts talking to other people. And I was like, great. I don't even want to, to like be, be paired with you or whatever. Um, and so Brian was there. And I, I was immediately had a crush on him. Uh, thought, he, thought he was really cute, thought he was funny. Uh, but he, like I could only interact with him when there was like a group of people talking. So like, you know, I would say something and a couple of people would talk and then he would say something. So I was, but I was like listening intently to what he said. I was like, oh, this guy. I, I was just like totally had like, like you know, have that total crush feeling um and then so the, the, the uh i i also talked to, to to other people at the party about volunteering at the berkeley free clinic and like volunteer i hated my job so but volunteering was something that i was wanting to do at the time because I, I was like i don't think my job really puts good in the world and so i want to feel like i'm doing something every week that puts good in the world and so like this just seemed like the perfect place to volunteer so i so i started volunteering there and uh you know, every time I was on a ship where, where Brian was there, it was always so hard to interact with him, but I always try to at least, you know, engage with him and, and, and say something. Uh, but so he has no idea that I have this like 
massive crush on like stressing over like the whole time during these shifts over like where is he? how am I going to get a chance to talk to him because he's training to be a medic and I was working in the front um so, so like we did it we weren't like working directly with each other um and then so it's like four or five months uh go by because yeah I started in March and so the, so it was in the beginning of June um uh, a group of people from the clinic were, were uh were, were going out to a bar um and uh and and i knew brian was gonna go and and i couldn't take it uh it's just, i was like I, I like i just have to tell him how i feel because like he's not even seeing like the, the real the real me he's just seen like that the even more heightened anxious version of me uh, <laughs> and even, even more shy like version of me um so so at, at the bar uh the, 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 there is a point where it's it's just me and him talking and I told him, like, look, look, I want to tell you something because I feel like if I if I don't tell you this, uh, like, you, you won't really really get get to know the, the real me. Um, but like, like I, I really like you. Um, and then I was rebuffed, and uh, he he didn't tell me why. He didn't say like, oh well, so sorry, I don't feel the same way. But uh, he just he, he was like, okay, yeah, but like that. He said, like, like, that can't ha happen. I can't remember what his exact wording were, was. This story is um, an emotional roller coaster, I would just <laughs> yes. like to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so then, so for like, t t for, so for two weeks, I was just a, to a total mess. Uh, I, I was like, what? Because I, I, I took it so personally, too. I was like, Brian's like the nicest guy, and he like doesn't even care to tell me why. He didn't even like try to let me down gently. I was like, oh, my God, he must hate me. Or I must have said something. Like, what, what the hell? Or like, I'm just... You know, not worthy of a guy like that. Um, so, uh, but yeah, and so th then this is another long part of the story, but I'll, I'll, I'll trim it down. Um, so he is actually dating uh, someone else at the clinic, and because he's trained training to be a medic, and this person's a medic, they can't tell anyone about the relationship because they are they are allowed. There's a rule about them not dating because there's a power dynamic there. And sure, sure, sure. You know, I'm sure in the forty year four year history of this clinic. Uh, where, where, where it's all gay men volunteering in this part of, of, of the clinic, you know, there's probably been quite a bit of drama when, when dating happens. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, but then, so Brian, that relationship will only last two weeks. So I like, so I told them, I, I said this at like the, the absolute worst time. Um, so, so they break up, but of course I don't know that they break up. So, so suddenly this friend, the, the, this other volunteer, is, is asking asking to hang out with me, you know, he's probably feeling down. And I, I, I had like kind of become fr friends with him, but of course, you know, I have no idea about him. Is this the guy Brian was dating that? Yeah. Oh it's inside and I have no idea. So he, so we go out to a party and then on the walk home, he starts having a conversation with me saying things like, uh, you know, like us, oh, so what kind of guys are you into? Are you seeing anybody right now? And, and so like, I could tell where this, this is going and, you know, and I, I didn't have any feelings for him, but, you know, I was friends with him. So I wanted to know, like, like, you know, get this conversation. And so I was like, oh, well, actually I do have feelings for someone, you know, Brian at the, at the clinic. <laughs> and he got intensely in interested. Um, I and, bet he and, did. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, we, we, we so he, he talked to me for an hour, but basically he said, I think something's different with Brian now. You should tell him again. And I was like, I'm not putting myself through this again. Are you insane? He's like, he's like, I think he's like, I could see, her. I think you should tell him. Um, and, and he like, and then I woke up the next morning to a text message where he's like, remember, to, like, good luck talking to Brian today. Da -da 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 -da. So, so during the shift, I told Brian that like I needed to, uh, wanted to ask him something uh, after shift. And so then after shift, uh, like, like we walked to his car and then, and I told him, you know, I told him, you know, I, I just like, you know, I, I still feel like I have strong feelings for you and it'd be really nice, you know, if, if we could hang out because I feel like at the clinic, we haven't really been able to, to hang out one-on-one -on -one and, and, and see that dynamic. Um, and then, and, and then he came clean about the, that he was seeing this other guy, but he said like, but they, 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 they fought a lot in the relationship and, it, and you know, it's really awkward now. And so he doesn't want to date someone else at the clinic. Uh, but he said, but it's like, if you want to hang out, like, like we, we can hang out, like just, just as friends. Uh, so, so we hang out like six times, usually like dinner and a movie or, or, or something like that. And like, and so, and the whole, every time the pretense is like, okay, yeah, we're just, we're just going to hang out. And like, these are fucking dates. 
<laughs> yeah, I was going to say dinner just friends. But... <laughs> Let's get a table for two. <laughs> Friday night. <laughs> um, and so, uh, so six dates, and then you finally like. You so, go so, so on the sixth one, I, I was driving him home, and, and you know, and then I, I was getting antsy. I was like, "These are so dates. These are, like these are going so well. Like, like I, I just want to call it out." So I was like, so, "So, so I did. I said, you know, like these don't really feel like dates." Um, and he's like, "Yeah, I know." And then, and then <laughs> he, he he said he does have feelings for me. Um, and then, so then I dropped him off. I went I went to to kiss him. Um, and he turned so I kissed his cheek and he said not yet but, it, but to me I was like oh my god that is so hot like, <laughs> it, was, it was just so sweet and it's like oh now I need to wait like a little longer um, and then uh, yeah and then at the, the next and then the, the next time we hung out it was basically a date and within like, like two weeks we, we were official and, and then that was that Aww. and then, and then t t 10 years later we got married and three years later is now <laughs> is now we, we, went, we went to cancun <laughs> <laughs> um should i ask a question i just if came up with one, a question so, if you've got one go for it um just in general because this is our pride podcast i guess man let me ask you then like what does pride mean to you because if you see behind us nick just put up his little toys i feel like nowadays because everything is commercialized and very consumerist and capitalist like companies for the month of june are like i'm gonna put a rainbow on it and right. i'll probably buy it i like rainbows <laughs> but that's not the whole meaning of pride so what would you say pride means to you right in terms of the concept or the holiday no the concept <laughs> I, I would like to hear the holiday or LA that. <laughs> oh my god we should talk about this later but at la pride this year just at the grove Last weekend, did you see they had back sync and it was two Backstreet Boys? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sync. Oh, yeah. my God. And then Michelle Visage was on stage with Todrick. Oh, OK. Tell me, <laughs> answer the question. <laughs> that would be a 30 second clip I'm probably going to cut. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if I've ever thought about it in a way of like, like articulating it into words. Um, but I think to me, I think, especially what I've like kind of taken away from like having really fulfilling experience at Pride, like like celebrations specifically, is like uh, just learning how to be to just be happy with who you are, and satisfied and fulfilled by it to a point that like no one can can take it away from you. There isn't something someone can say that could. Uh, and you know, I felt like like. Growing up in, in like in the closet as as a teenager, I was just so so fragile. Like you know, just the little, littlest comment could you know devastate me for, for you know weeks. You know, disrupt my entire mental health. Um, and so yeah, just just really getting get, get, getting to a place where yeah, uh, you, you know, no one can do anything to take it away from you. I love that. I was just about to say, wow. Okay. He's like, I've never thought about this, but let me tell you the most deep, <laughs> <laughs> profound thing. That's awesome. That's very awesome. Well, then before we get to the holiday and your, 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 <laughs> what it means to you, I'm curious then, because we've touched on it a little bit. And then you also just touched on it there. What, uh, one of the things I want to talk about is maybe how much of your coming out story you're comfortable sharing with us. What was that like? What was it like growing up in the closet? What, you know, what did it mean to you to come out? How did that happen? How did it unfold, et cetera? Um, well, yeah, so I, I, I'm born and raised in California uh, until I moved to LA in 2014. I lived in the Bay Area my whole life. Uh, I grew up kind of next to Palo Alto, a town called Los Altos. Uh, and so, you know, a lot of people you think of like, like San Francisco and the Bay Area and California in general is always, you know, it'd be, be liberal and gay friendly, but, but uh, you know, before t like 2004, they're just, you know, you, the only discussions and depictions of, you know, uh, queer people um, in entertainment and in the media and whatnot uh, would like, you know, um, almost always be just like a, a negative stereotype, you know, and of course, teenagers that, like saying that's gay and, and the F word and stuff like that at, at the time was the cool thing, thing to say. So, yeah, I just, um, I remember like, like in eighth grade is when I first started, I, I know I, I had like, like feelings about it before and could detect it, but they, they had confused me in eighth grade is when like the conversation in my head started like 
oh, you might be this gay thing people talk about. And, and I was just like, oh no, there's no way I could be that, no, no way. But like but by a sophomore year, I think was when like in, internally I acknowledged it to myself. And I, I just lo looked around the world. I was like, my parents don't have gay friends. I've never met a gay person before. I've only seen these depictions in, in, in the media. It's like, I know I'm not a bad person and I don't think it's wrong and I'm not religious, but I, I just, immediately thought like there's no path to happiness if people find this out so no one will ever know and I made this promise to myself like no one will ever know like you'll do whatever it takes to keep up this lie like no way it's weird it, yeah and it's weird thinking about it now I didn't I haven't thought about it re recently like it's just su such an intense thing for what like a 12 year old yeah heartbreaking yeah um, so I, and then, yeah, from, from that point on, I was just very deeply in the closet. Um, you know, there, there's like, like, I, I knew, I would know I had crushes on people and I would like think about those crushes all the time, you know, with, with the internet, the gay porn was accessible. So like between those two things, it was like very obvious to me, um, uh, that, 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 that I was, it was the, you know, constant con confirmation and it almost some, almost two versions of my inner monologue. I'd have my inner monologue where like, I wouldn't acknowledge I was gay. And then I'd have my inner, inner monologue, like those times when I like could take like, okay, like, I, I, like I, I'll acknowledge it and, you know, uh, think about whatever, make a decision about what, whatever based, based on that. Um, and then, so I go to school at, at Berkeley, again, super liberal place. Like looking back, like, it probably wouldn't have been till senior year or right after graduating college when I had that kind of change in life uh, where I would have been, been able to at least like, like come out fully. But then um, I, had, I had this like health crisis one two punch of for, first getting appendicitis to getting hospitalized for, for, for five days. And so it's like, and I, I was hospitalized for so long because it started leaking because I, I was studying for a final and I was so obsessed with studying for the final. I was like, I'm, okay, I'll, I'll get the scene after the final, after the final, but then in the middle of the night, the, the, the pain was too unbearable. And so like, I was like, oh my God, I could have like killed myself because I was taking school, school too seriously. So I was, that was like a big revelating moment. Uh, and then, and of course, and then I was really focused on my health and stuff like that. And then Two months later, I, I started to think there's something wrong with my testicle. And uh, after a month after that, I finally found a urologist who was willing, I would go in and get a physical and they'd say like, oh, I know what you're talking about, but I, I, I don't think it's cancer. And I just, I wouldn't accept it, possibly partly because of the appendicitis. I was like, no, I'm gonna see this through. So I found a urologist who said, okay, I'll give you a, uh, um, ultrasound just to give you peace of mind. Cause I don't want you to keep going and seeing because I, I told him all, about all the other people I, I'd seen. And so I, I got the, the ultrasound and then he called me the three hours later and told me that it wasn't fat cancer. Uh, so that, so I had, you know, I was in like total shock, but like as I was coming out of the, the, the shock and could, could start thinking and processing it, like the first thought in my mind was like, oh my God, you, you are fucking gay. You, what the fuck are you doing with this life? This is fucking insane. What the fuck is wrong with you? Fuck everybody else in the world. What the fuck? It's like, it's like you know, I just like woke up, it's, you know, like like after not drinking or whatever. It's like, what the hell was I doing last night? Yeah, what, yeah. Why would I? Why would I be going down these thoughts? Like, what is wrong? It's like, I, was like <laughs> I have gay friends. They're all living happy lives right now. That that, that totally is an antithesis to like your initial reasoning for being in the closet. Like what the <laughs> fuck is wrong with you? Um, and so, so I knew, so it was just like, I knew I, I was coming out. It, I think it still took me like two to three months to, to tell the first person, probably because, you know, I was also going through the cancer thing, which, which was really scary. Yeah. You know, this, this small deal where you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the big C that, you know, defines <laughs> other people's lives. <laughs> right. Um, and so, yeah, they, uh, within a couple of days, they, they, they removed the test, the testicle, which is actually an easier procedure than the appendix, because the, the appendix, because they, they just do an incision at the top of your thigh and they kind of pull it out from there. Um, so, and, and then I didn't even have to go through radiation treatment, but they said, uh, like the, the odds of it coming back go, like instead of being 94% or like 98%, uh, or against it coming back if, if you get the radiation treatment. And so even though like I really didn't want to, I, I decided to because it's like if it came back 
I didn't get the radiation treatment. I would, you know, I don't want to yeah. die, die yeah. Hating, hating that decision. Wow. Um, but then, and then, and then so, so I'd have to get uh, checkups uh, for the, basically the next 10 years until they could basically say like, statistically you are basically cured. So now you are technically in the survivorship category. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it was, it's because it was, I think the last year I was living in San Francisco, it was the last and final test. We had no idea when we asked you <laughs> that you were going to have a like literal my coming out story was I had to face Death? mortality yeah. and right. then Jeez, it man. finally woke me up and made me be like, hey, gee, I, I'm just going to be myself <laughs> and be my true self because there's no reason not to be because life is short. Wow. Yeah. Well, and, and it gives me this, uh, it, it, that's like the only thing that could get me to like to, to believe in God is when I think about that, that experience. Um, because it, it totally, I mean, it changed, not just for being gay, it changed the, the way I look at kind of a lot of things. That's what started my like interest in like uh, art and taking filmmaking and storytelling, like saying like, oh, that, maybe that's actually would be the fulfilling thing I would want to get out of my life, not just do the career that everyone else says you're supposed to do that, you know, is, you know, uh, impressive to society or whatever. And it's like, fuck, fuck all these other people, I don't care what they think. Um, so yeah, it was, yeah. And so I had this weird relationship with, with the cancer experience because ob obviously it was devastating, really difficult. And like, I did, my hair started graying the second half of college because because of all the anxiety I was going through. Well, that, that probably plus all the anxiety I was in to just being in the closet before that. Uh, I didn't want to call you out, but I I had thought a couple of times like that you seem more gray than someone should be for your age. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I understand why. Like. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a very complicated relationship with cancer because it's like, well, I don't want that to, if I could change it, I wouldn't change that. But I was, I mean, it, it all like for getting cancer too, but like, it, like mine was a very straightforward process. Um, so, so but I'm also like fortunate about that. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it, it's just weird, but I guess I can't change it in, in life. So that's, that's mind blowing. And, and to give our listeners a moment to process this, I'm going to hope you'll forgive me. I'm going to bring a, an opportunity for levity. How close to the whole Tom Green and kids oh. check your balls was this? Out of curiosity? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that song, it came out. I think that song helped me. Uh, yeah. Wow. Well, I, it's funny you said that because as you were telling your whole story, I was like, this could be a movie. Legit. Legit. Just saying. Well, I have a pilot that I've written that I, I think it's the best thing that I've written. Um, it's called My Dick Gave Me Cancer. And <laughs> I guess I'll, I'm plugging stuff on the podcast now. Uh, do it. Do it. Do and it. I was actually going to have you plug at the end anyway, so go for it. Okay. It's uh, amazing. Matt, we could talk to you forever, but yo, we were, do it. We're, we're going on long time in here. Uh, yeah, so long that she's <laughs> mixing words and not really making any sense at this point. But, but thank you for sharing all of that. That's so just, yeah. that's, that's crazy. And I think that your story is one that needs to be told. Agree. I well, agree. Well, uh, call Hollywood for me and, and get that, get, get I, got him, I got him on the speed dial. I'll, uh, I'll get on it. Awesome. But in the meantime, uh, we do have to do our next segment. What's our next segment, Danny? Uh, did you just call me Denny? Yeah. Hey, Denny. Hey, Denny. Hey, Denny. Hey, Denny. Hey, Denny. Uh, I think it's called Closer Through Science. Oh, my God. She actually remembered. That's Hashtag. right. Closer Through Science. And Nick, you explain it. What do we do for Closer Through Science? All right. So for Closer Through Science, we uh, come off of this uh, 1997 article by Aaron and they developed a series of questions uh, where they had strangers ask these questions of each other to get closer to each other. And they're uh, I don't want to, I hesitate to word, use the word proven, but essentially has, uh, you know, they are psychologically proven scientifically to make people closer. So we always get closer to our guests and we allow our guests to get closer to our listeners uh, by sharing their answers to these questions. And then from there, listeners, you can get closer to us and each other by sharing with the hashtag closer through science. So Danny what is our closer through science question going to be for Matt? Well, all these you already, like he literally already just answered through his stories. 
Um, I'd gone down to 26 for that same reason. Okay. Okay. Complete this sentence, Matt. I wish I had someone with whom I could share. Dot, dot, dot. dot, dot. dot. <laughs> right, right now in my life. These are getting tougher as we go along. I mean, that is kind of the point. <laughs> yeah, this, this is tough. Cause yeah, like we Brian and I are both in, in, introverts, so we spend we spend a lot of time together. So I do have that. Um, I mean, I, I guess a big the, the big thing that I do that that he isn't into, and I live in LA now, not San Francisco. Is I'm a big NFL fan. I'm a big 49ers fan. Uh, but it's hard that I met, met like a couple people who are 49ers fans, so I can get together with them. Uh, to watch games occasionally. We, we, we went to a game when they played down here in LA a lot before COVID. Uh, but it would be nice to have a buddy like I had in SF where like anytime you felt like watching the Niner game with someone, and one, especially during playoffs, playoffs, I always want to watch if the Niners are in. I always want to watch with other people because it's, it's so exciting. Um, that would be nice to have. That's great. Yeah, that's I, I'm going to do the rare thing where I actually will share on the podcast while mine is because it sounds so very similar to mine. I was going to say, like, I wish I had someone for whom I could share my love of video games with somebody to actually play video games with me and <laughs> talk about video games with me and enjoy watching and playing them with me. She's gotten on board with the movies, folks. I got I got to kind of do one thing at a time. No, you can make a video game podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb turned me on to girlfriend reviews and it is awesome and hilarious and i've been watching a lot of them and danielle keeps listening to it and going that sounds like me that sounds like me and i'm like it would be if you would just sit and watch video games with me but anyway neither here nor there all right caleb is uh one of the people who are in cancun with us i love caleb As i mean i love you i mean we just made <laughs> lifelong friends um so well that is going to bring us to our break we're gonna break briefly everyone we're gonna break briefly break, 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 break. <laughs> you're gonna hear a little bit of uh, us talking about plugging something and we're probably gonna use the restrooms oh, before we then pee. continue our conversation <laughs> about our movie for the portion of the podcast the with movies portion and matt once again what is the movie that we will be discussing the way he looks all right and we'll see you in a minute in love with movies da, da, da. do you have something you want to talk about before we bring it all back and we're back and we're back okay <laughs> welcome back movie lovers welcome back to in love with movies and now we are going to be discussing the movie the way he looks the way he looks 2014 some basic uh information that matt gave us in the first half already it is a brazilian foreign language film so be ready to read those subtitles if you uh do choose to watch it it is on Amazon, available for streaming as well. And I noted, uh, as I was looking through some other kind of notable things I try to look up in advance, uh, it was submitted by Brazil in that year for the Oscar consideration uh, for oh. foreign language films. What won that year? Uh, I don't think it was accepted even as a like, oh. final. So what, what happens for the foreign language film category? Every country selects a movie. They have a, a committee or something. Uh, that, that chooses a movie to represent their country for that, that category. And then the five of them are chosen as the nominees. Oh, so and that was the movie that represented Brazil that year. Yes. Right. So that's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's essentially them saying this is yeah. our yeah. best film from our entire country. Exactly. And I will say, Matt, this is the first time I've ever watched a foreign film <laughs> or Maybe not ever, ever, but I rarely ever watch like indie or like international film festival, even though in Chicago, really? like we had a, a big international film festival. I don't we always get like Ellen would give us tickets if we wanted. And I was like, I'm, I'm working Man. on her cinematic education <laughs> when others this season of the podcast have helped with that a great deal. I appreciate it. Yeah, because I liked it. Yeah. which i'm going to talk about at the end but yeah i'm very glad that we watched spoilers. it. spoilers <laughs> well, well, so, well while we're on that subject um uh, I, I think film festivals are really fun and chicago must have an lgbtq plus one. Oh, i'm sure um, and so uh and i'll get into this more later but watching this film with a gay audience is so much fun and there's that's i, I mentioned outfest is the los angeles one uh, it's just it's my favorite audience to watch movies with and so when you get to watch a good movie at that festival it's so entertaining and sometimes the bad ones too because like everyone's just laughing hysterically and whatnot 
that, wow. I mean, that is the best to watch with a crowd of people is the worst movies mm-hmm. and right, the right. best movies. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we get into uh, Matt's love story with this, then should we give the Danny's dingle? Man, I'm never prepared for these things. You're not supposed to be prepared. It's, this is your improv skills. <laughs> this right. is what you bring to the table. Insert music here. Ding. <laughs> High school. Brazil. Portuguese, not Spanish. Not close. Blind boy. Everyone is mean. New kid, curly hair, very attractive. Inappropriate for me to think he's attractive. Uh, secret love. The end. Okay. <laughs> well, that gives a decent summary without giving too many spoilers or what I think. Because uh, if I'm being totally honest, and uh, listener and Matt, please don't judge me too harshly. I was the first three quarters of this movie. I feel like I was feeling like it was kind of homework, and then but everything kind of came together in my opinion at the end. And then we'll talk a lot about like I think some of the metaphors that were there and some things that were deeper and as things started connecting um it really came together and, and walloped you and i think a very good uh but in the heart kind of way uh, at the yeah. end in my opinion but danny and i's love stories with this is not exciting at all because the answer is basically we watched it two or three days ago mm-hmm. because matt picked it for this podcast so that's our love story with this movie we streamed <laughs> on amazon it's everyone else's love story who's probably listening to this but matt what is your love story with this movie why did you pick it when did you first see it uh explain what it means to you so i, I used to go to Fra- the frameline film festival in san francisco that's the lgbtq plus one there um and then so 2014 was the year i moved to la i knew i wanted to go to the, uh, the la uh queer folk film festival um and so this was i saw this at my first out fest it was one of I, um, I didn't know anything about it going to see. I think I knew that the main character was blind because like, they have like just a short little blurb on the, the film guide. Uh, but it, it was like one of the, the marquee films be, being shown. But, but like it was like on Tuesday night, like this was the like event film for, for the festival. Um, and so, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I just love uh, discovering a movie or, or, or a TV show that 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 is, you know, unique and, and, and really well done and where I knew nothing going into it. I, there was no spoilers. I didn't see the trailer. I didn't read about it. Um, because like I said before, the, the, the entire experience is a surprise. I mean, it, it's so annoying with, with so many mainstream movies these days where like, you know, you, you watch the trailer and then when you're watching the movie, like, you know what's gonna happen for the first two thirds of the movie. And at that point, like, if you've seen enough movies, it's like, you can kind of guess how the climax is gonna go. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and like, I, like I, I went to film school, so I studied storytelling and screenwriting, so I know all the tricks too with that all the mainstream movies use. So it's like even the, like worse for me. Um, so what was then interesting? So I really like really liked the movie. I thought it was really y- unique. Oh, well, so, so yeah. So first, a big complaint at queer film festivals uh, historically is that there's always so many coming out movies, and a lot of times they're really depressing because like like there's so much so much dark, dark stuff happens in it. Um, like we're like, where are the movies just, just about gay life? And so I thought this was this is just such a nice coming out story, but the the whole sequence of events is like telling this person, seeing how they react to it. It is still like it's still just about someone who happens to be gay, and what's really going on in, in the story um, it, it is is something else, and it's not an exploration of his sexual identity. It's an ex explanation of his like his sexuality uh, and his first experience falling in love and having and having a crush uh, so I, I just think it like it just articulates that that, that really well uh, I thought that the, the blind angle on it uh, I, I thought was brilliant and I, I the film director was there and I heard the talk after the movie so I, I could talk about that in a little bit but why I particularly love this film is it's a really happy, positive film, right? There's conflict and stuff and you feel bad for, for the blind guy, but everything works out in the end and you know, another new guy shows up for the female character. Yeah, um, right, we have Danielle, <laughs> when he walks in, she's like, it's the same guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, I... oh. No, you go, go ahead. you finish. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Uh, but I was sad after I watched it for a little bit. And I had to like process like wh- why I was sad. And then, and then I 
could, 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 could appreciate it. And then whenever I watched like, like a movie I really liked, then the first, and Brian wasn't there, the first, I, I watched way more co content than, than Brian. Um, so the first thing I do is then I want to watch it with Brian. So the next time Brian visited LA, um, I got a hold of the movie and I watched it with him. And then afterwards I was like, so, so what'd you think? And then he just starts like critiquing it and criticizing it and saying negative things. But, then, like, but I would explore that with him. I'd be like, but, but what are you talking about? Like, like oh, the bullying was like kind of unrealistic and, and, and a little too much. And I was like, but weren't all these other parts of the movie good? He's like, yeah, I, yeah, I guess. And then like what came out of the conversation, he's like, oh, well, I guess the movie just, just kind of made me mad because um, I didn't have that when I was in high school. And I, that's why I was sad after I watched it. Cause it was, I, I mean, that's like the gay fantasy. Like you're, you're realizing you're gay in high school. It doesn't seem like anybody else's, but here's this mystery new kid shows up and he becomes your best friend. And then you fall in love. And like in this movie, like just the fall sequence of falling in love, it was the way they do it is just so well, well done where there's ups and downs, but there's always like that hope there. And there's, there's so much fun along the way. Um, and you know they, he's such a good guy. They have such a good like like rapport, and they make each other better. Um, and you know like for when, when you're, it, it's changing, of course. And there's probably been some small pockets of, of, of the country where maybe like like gay youth can kind of experience that. But for the for the most part, that's like one of the big things that's stolen from you when 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 you're queer. You you don't you know you don't get the high school prom. You don't get uh, kind of all these things that every movie about high school is constantly shoving down, down your throat. Mm -hmm. um, and so for this movie to have a tone that is so positive and cute and adorable and easy to digest to then cause this like huge, complex, powerful reaction, like it, the film has just always stuck with me. I just think the filmmaker did such an incredible job with it uh, on so many levels. And yeah, it, I it, it put me through like me and Brian both through like a little mini therapy session. Yeah, I will have to say I was very relieved because as listeners of this podcast and my friends and Nick knows, I, I, I hate like depressing movies. So when I saw it was like an international like <laughs> film festival, I was like, oh, no. About gay oh, sexuality. No. I just like <laughs> going in, I was like, it's going to be dark. I would, be, I would be blind. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which that reveal within like, it's only in the first few minutes, but I do feel like when they're first at the pool, it's not obvious until they get up to leave and then she like helps him. And then you're like, oh, 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 he's, he's blind. But well, I saw it on, on the little snippet too, that he was blind, <laughs> but that actually got me into it because, you know, I work in disability. So like, I really appreciate, like, I'm sure you do like seeing people represented on the screen that aren't normally represented. And there's not mm -hmm. a ton of movies and it wasn't about him really being blind. It was about, like you said, his journey through high school and like finding love. And he just happened to be blind. Yeah, mm -hmm. and just happened to be gay. And as you said, and it's fascinating to me, you heard you and your husband had that reaction that Brian, like anger, one sadness, because it is the fantasy Rob from you. I think you're right about it being so very similar. And I'd like to think that some of that has changed, but even, and that goes to show how much has changed even in the last like 10 years. You know what I mean? Like that when you were in high school, that was, we were talking about it earlier. I can, I can remember what it was like being in high school and things like, you know, the word gay being thrown around, you know, it's not that long. I mean, I did note at one point while we were watching this is it felt very real. Like, I think that's the thing that attracted me the most to it at the end, especially is like, you're right, that love story. And yes, it happened to be about him being gay too, but just the sort of the the dynamics the anxiety around high school and the social circles and trying to be cool and trying to be accepted and they focus mostly on the fact that he's blind with regards to that um but obviously i think that's designed intentionally to be sort of the more opaque uh lens that you are then dealing with the uh subtlety of his homosexuality being there as well right yeah, no, I loved it. And like, for me, the themes that I related most to were, first of all, that little um, slutty girl in high school, like that was me. <laughs> and she was like messing around with the clearly gay guy. That reminded me that of my best friend. Danny. Yes, who was also me. Um, <laughs> but also just the idea of like, it's subtle in the movie, but like learned helplessness about like parents not wanting him because he's blind to do the same things that 
everyone else's age would and how that affected him and like <clears throat> that subtle additional relationship with his parents I thought was really interesting and added like a dynamic to the movie that made it for me very like again real like I see yeah. that with a ton of the students that I work with the reason they aren't able to do half the things they're not able to do like when he couldn't put the keys in himself like he always had to have someone else put the keys in he could do it right but like someone else has always done it for him and I thought that was super super interesting yeah go ahead Matt um yeah I, I just thought yeah I mean you know it, it just made me a little bit like um realize you know, all, the, all these like just very specific things that like a blind person would go through um that, that yeah I just you know just just hadn't considered because I I haven't had, had like a friendship or, or anything with, with someone who is blind um so yeah and especially and then thinking of like yeah what a blind kid like in high school what that what's that like and yeah yeah the that, one line uh, argument with the parents and, uh, yeah sorry the one line that really got me was when he start like the first time he hangs out with um oh my god when giovanni hangs out with leo leo hangs out with giovanni leo's the the Gio blind giovanna oh. i think is the oh giovanna wait <laughs> the girl i'm talking about the girl right yeah wait what's the guy's name gabriel 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 so leo's the blind kid falls in love with gabriel um when they're like first out to eat and they're just like becoming friends and he's like have you seen that video about the cat in the toilet and then he goes oh <laughs> Because he hasn't seen, obviously he hasn't seen the video. And I, that's another thing that like in this movie made it so realistic of people are like, you want to go to the movies? Oh, but it doesn't mean he didn't want to go to the movies. You know, it's just like, it's different for him. So I just thought that was that subtle part as well. It just made it so real. And like, in again, in the disability world, just so relatable. Do you think Matt, or did they say anything since you did get to see the, the creators speak a little bit about this, that the blindness was being used intentionally as a sort of metaphor for you know the the difference of the gay experience like i had that thought especially with regards to his parents being so overprotective and it's sort of like we hear that story a lot even of like accepting parents sort of being like well i am accepting of you being gay but i'm just worried because you know it would make your life really hard i can remember having that conversation with my mom at some point in high school where you know like i wasn't but you know, she kind of at some point for whatever reason expressed like I, you know, I of course would accept you. I would just worry about you because it would make your life so much more difficult because of the world we live in. And I feel like that's kind of the same thing that was happening with regards to his blindness. It's like they're like trying to protect him, trying to keep the world from hurting him because he's blind. And I'm wondering if it was intentional to be like, well, same thing in terms of trying to protect your children because you're gay. Yeah, uh, well, and I think, um, I'll get to the director in a minute. Um, one thing when I rewatched it this time that I realized made it so, so so effective is like being a gay teenager and you're not out to anyone and knowing that your school appears to, to be gay. It's so isolating and so lonely. And so through this film, you saw it like through his blindness where that's yeah, just another thing that makes him, him so isolated. I think it, it just really brings up those feelings of those conflicts and kind of yeah, yeah, what he's going through. Um, so in terms of the filmmaker, I don't remember the filmmaker saying that specifically. What I do remember him saying was his concept. So he first made a short film that did, that did really well. And then these the three main characters he brought from the short films that he developed the characters and stories further to make this feature film. Um, he originally came up with the, the concept because like growing up, he would hear like homophobic things like uh, like being gay, it's just a fetish. It's just a physical attraction. So he's like, well, what? what if a blind person is gay? Like, they, they can still be gay. And what does that mean? And it's not necessarily a physical attraction because you can't see the other person. Um, you know, and, and like in the case of this movie, he, he never is able to t touch Gabriel that much until the end when, when they're really close, but he's already developed feelings for him. So he wanted to show kind of what that would look like. And I, so I've always thought this film is like a good thesis for, uh, you know, that being gay is related to love. It's not like, yeah, a fetishization or, or a physical thing. I love that. That thought literally never occurred to me until you just said it now, but mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. And that totally is true. And it's, it's that deeper connection um, mm -hmm. to the person, but oh, wow, thank you. Yeah, yeah, because like when I watched the film, I didn't consider that too. So when, yeah, when you said that, I was like, oh my God, that's, that's so brilliant. Yeah. I just thought, it, like you said, it was just very cute and like, 
um, the best friend, how she gets jealous and clearly like also has a crush on him a little mm-hmm. bit, but then has a crush on the other gay guy, which like, listen, all you ladies listening, we are all attracted to all the gay guys. My first three boyfriends were gay. Um, <laughs> so that was very realistic. And then um, honestly, I like felt the love, the passion that Leo had when he was like sniffing that hoodie, man. I was yeah. like, I just remember thinking in high school, like if I had a boy's hoodie, I, the same exact way. <laughs> uh, not the same exact way, just because you happen to not be someone who would have done what he did with the hoodie. Okay, we'll stop it. You smell the hoodie a lot. <laughs> I was, it's funny you bring up that scene because I actually was going to write down, that was one of the things I noticed. I f- and I feel like it's part of what made me, I'm trying to think of how I, uh, um, I said the early romance parts seem very subtle and slow to me. And I wasn't sure if that was, because it's a Brazilian film and it's not like, you know, the same American sensibilities that I'm used to, or if it was maybe because it was gay or something like that. But when you're watching that first part and the two of them hanging out, it really does feel to me, at least like not your stereotypical romance. There's not this obvious attraction there. They're not doing some of the camera angles or the music cues to really play it up. And it's not really, really clear to me, at least that he was definitely attracted to him in a romantic or sexual sense until he was sniffing the hoodie. And I literally made the note like, oh, wow, yeah, I can totally, and that feeling you were talking about. And then they went like, you know, another step (laughs) because (laughs) that kind of film. But I'm curious what your thoughts are Um, on that. Yeah, I guess I guess the other thing that was spoiled for me for the film is that the the, the main character is m- most likely gay because it's playing at a, a queer film festival. Fair enough. So, That's so, a so it, it, would, it would be really it, it would be really interesting to to watch it and not know that because you think oh because then initially you think maybe something's going to be- develop between Leo and Giovanna. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, but, uh, I, I, I think it was it was subtle and slow. I think that was just this. I don't know if it's that's typical Brazilian storytelling and filmmaking. Um, I think that's just the, the, the style he wanted to tell. I, I, I found it effective, but I found it effective, but of course I knew, I just assumed that the, the second he walked in the door, I was like, oh God, okay, this is gonna be a crush. So <laughs> it, was, it was on my mind, but I thought like the, the first shower scene, I thought it was fantastic. Like he, I, I think it's after he hangs out with Gabriel for the, the first time or one of the first times. Uh, so you see him like, like, you know, visualizing and acting out, making out in the shower. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, I think there were, there were subtle things that I, I picked up on, but like as a gay person where it's like, when you're interested in someone and you want to make sure absolutely no one knows you're interested in them. Um, and, and you want, and you know, you want to find out more than them. You have to be so sneaky and subtle. So, but, and they would have shots of him where like, when he'd overhear someone else talk about Gabriel and you'd see his like ear perked up a little bit. And so you, you can tell, oh, he's really, a, he is intensely in, interested in Gabriel and he doesn't want anyone to know that he has that interest. Okay. So yeah, I didn't notice some of that. I love That's awesome. Yeah. I also just like that the opening dialogue is just about like a summer of romance and kissing someone. And he was just like, I'm never going to kiss anyone and just didn't seem interested in girls. But you just think it's because he's like, well, at the beginning, you're like, oh, it's because he's blind and maybe no one likes him because he's blind, because he's different. But in reality, he doesn't like girls because he likes boys, yeah. you know? And I don't even know if he really knows that at the beginning or didn't yeah. understand it. Because, yeah, because he, it probably takes a lot more for him to get attracted to someone because he has to then know them. It's not like he just looks across the room and, you know, can, it's yeah. like, okay, I'm, I'm attracted to this person, this person, this person. So, it, yeah, we, we, I would, I guess the, the the way it was presented in the film is that, yeah, it would take get kind of longer for him to, to, to realize that. I didn't even think about that, but yeah, even more so because of that isolation piece we were talking about where like, it doesn't seem like there's that many people that he does get close to. Really the only one we see is Giovanna. And mm-hmm. I mean, he's clearly established. I know I'm not attracted to her in that sense, but like, <laughs> you know, he, he would, doesn't have many other opportunities it seems like to, to even get to know that. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. And obviously, until he, you know, stumbles upon Gabriel and the other girl in the pool. So yeah. Well, well, yeah. That, uh, I, I love that you brought that up because I, yeah, I forgot to. Because um, the coming out process, you do always think about the person who's coming out, and you know, rightfully, you know, think about about it being, you know, all about them. Um, I I can't believe I, I forgot to say this. My worst coming out was to my best friend. Because wow. I, we were best friends since like the eighth grade and this is now the middle of college and she was at Davis. So we still saw each other regularly in college. Um, 
And she was like mad because she just felt like so much of our relationship where it was a lie. You know, it took, she, she had to take a moment to like, like, well, like, what's the real you? Like she, she at first she was saying like, you're not gay. You're not gay. Like that one party we made out, Matt, that wasn't gay. <laughs> yeah. That, <laughs> and I was like, been there. Uh. Like, actually, <laughs> and I was like, actually that, I thought you were suspecting me. So that's why I did that. <laughs> um, so, uh, th- th- yeah. Um, so like the, the, the lie does affect a lot of people. Like, um, Brokeback Mountain was the other movie I was almost gonna have us watch for this podcast because I thought it'd be really, I haven't seen it since it first came out and I thought it would be really interesting to look on look, look at it today to see how it holds up. If, if maybe there's something problematic in it. Uh, uh, yeah, because I have no idea and I don't remember much about it, but I thought they handled the, the, the wife characters really well. Cause you see like, you know, it's not just the, the men who are hurt. Like when they make this fake lie, everyone who gets wrapped up into it also gets hurt. Yeah, that's a good way to put it of like, again my shock in real life was probably because of the same thing like i've i've known you for such a long time and who that you didn't share this huge piece of you where like me i felt like i shared everything because i didn't have it you know i didn't really have anything that i society told me was wrong right so i didn't have to think about it and so when someone else shared that with me i was like "Mm, okay then who are you really but But what else are you lying about exactly yeah you say that about things and then I think that it's the it's the emotional baggage that comes because society's put such a big deal on it with something like homosexuality or queerness of any kind specifically because like I, one thing I've thought about or we've been talking about a little bit is there's actually things we can relate on as straight people or, or something that, like society or my parents or whomever don't want me to be as interested in watching movies and talking about it as much or, or, or video games, or God forbid you want to pursue the arts. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. those are the same thing. It's just that they don't come with the same level of emotional baggage because they've at least got a longer standing point where we can talk about the reasons why like they're, they're bad or whatever, but it's like, we spend so much of our lives telling each other, why you shouldn't be the thing that you really are but then we're surprised when we're open and honest with each other about it and i feel like there are elements to ourselves that we protect even from our closest friends i mean we've talked about this on the podcast before too like there are pieces of me that i have felt like i've never been able to share with anyone until i met danielle and the big reason that i i think our relationship has been successful if i was going to point at one thing is it's that time and time again there has been things that it was very scary for me to share with her about my some true aspect of myself something about my thoughts something about my feelings something about my preferences and even when it's like me being an idiot or making a mistake she still is accepting and is loving of me the whole person that i am and i think we do that to each other at every level in every relationship (laughs) across the board and the only thing that's kind of really that different for for homosexuality is that this baggage that comes along with it but though that's I, I talk too long but the point I'm trying to get at is everybody's like oh well I can't understand it and I never will understand it and like there is little pieces in our each of our lives I'm sure that we can relate to that experience on some very small aspect if you just imagine it being you know dialed up to 111 like then that's probably what the same situation is is that you then just feel like you've had to protect yourself from sharing that truth about yourself with even the closest people around you Right. Yeah. Basically, and, and anything you identify that society judges, and so you start taking actions to hide that, that identity. Uh, but that, what is, I hate a lot of things about the coming out process. You know, having to like, why the whole time I'm like, I'm everyone in my life, including my family, and tell them who I'm who I'm sexually attracted to. It's like yeah. so awkward. It, it's almost humiliating. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Um, but the coming out process kind of in general, not just sitting down and having those conversations, but realizing this thing about yourself and taking actions to like un- uncover who you, re- you really are. You know, I, I, I talk to, to queer people, uh, talk to a lot of queer people about how like, you know, you don't just, you know, suddenly start acting on, you know, this new identity. You, you discover all these new things about yourself and it's like, oh, and, and you, you realize how important it is to change 
and all these other aspects of your life towards you know who who you really are and what and what you really find fulfilling in life um it, it, and and you know listen less to all those pressures society puts on you to to be a cer certain way and so and so it ends up being you know a valuable life experience because you're usually doing it like at the end of your te teenage years or as a, as a young adult so it's kind of like a rebirth for you as you approach that that next huge phase of, of your life at like the, the end of childhood um that straight cis people don't have like you have this event and it's a process and you you, you then sit down you have a very serious co conversation with everyone who's important to you in your, your life as well yeah i we've never had to do that <laughs> Yeah, but in, I think there's something about human development. And in fact, I've, I've, it's not my actual field of psychology, but I've taken a couple of classes in it. And, and those sort of ceremonies and those that, that really help you put bookends on the different chapters or aspects of your life and really make you reflect on what's important to you um, can be very important and very meaningful. I mean, it's the things like, that's why we have, like there's cultures that have things like quinceañeras. Like they're supposed to be like, gen, like, this is an important stage. Like you're an adult now and you should be like going through a transitional period as a result of that. Um, but that's a really great point that that sort of gay people, queer people have that almost built in. It's a silver lining to what is usually a very, uh, like you said, dark tale. But I think it, I think your experience speaks to that a lot though. And maybe that's why you're so in tune with it is because your experience of deciding to start coming out to people came as a result of again just sort of a like my i'm gonna reevaluate everything in my life because i'm very much intimately aware of how short it can be <laughs> right <laughs> but how yeah it can but like overnight instantly change but it'll be taken away yeah there's a tim mcgraw song <laughs> <laughs> called live like you're dying and that's i mean this is the perfect thing but yeah all right. Well, I don't know that we have much else to discuss about the movie. Is there anything that you had in your notes, Matt, that you really wanted to make sure you got, got off your chest? Another thing, uh, you know, the, the, we, we've talked about a number of them, just just all these just just little threads that they have in there where like the story it, 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 it is so basic, uh, you know, but so, something about it works, but like, like really, really well. And if, one thing his desire to move away I think a lot of gay kids fantasize about moving away. Like a lot of gay kids go to a school on the other side of the country when they go to college because they want to get away from this whole structure where they built up this whole lie and want a chance to, to try something new, especially if like, you know, you're just going away for a semester. So then it's like, you know, there's no stakes here. You know, I could act on these feelings, see what happens. And I go back and uh, I never see those people again. Um, so I thought that was just a great, great, great element that, that they had in there. And then it's just, of course, fun, fun to see him then struggle back and forth because now Gabriel's here and maybe he wants to stay. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that too. I was like, is there a part two to this movie? <laughs> <laughs> a sequel? But So that moment in that last scene or almost last scene where they're, they're talking about be, be, being drunk at the camp and uh, Leo, Leo has just that great line where he's like, Oh, that, that that's weird when uh you know you must you must not have drank that much because you know the other night you, you when you kissed me there you know that he doesn't say that but uh you know you, you said you, you were drinking you didn't remember everything didn't remember anything for, from the night and so like when i watched it in the theater i think because you know there's that tension because we don't know what's going to happen mm -hmm. there was such a loud laughter because but and like a happy laughter is like you know like it, it's, it's a really smart thing to say um and it's just that like release of that tension yeah i loved that scene especially for, for like all of what you all are talking about and then i literally wrote so this reminded me i did write have something else i wrote down this quote it was such a great line eventually after they talk about that he then says if you stole a kiss how would you give it back and that's the line that then leads into them actually kissing and then hugging and i was like that is just that is writing right there. That is like, <laughs> wow. And then on what you're saying in terms of like feeling it, and, and, and I don't know if these actors are, are gay or not, just as, as that guy was convincing as blind, but I mean, we were just watching something the other day, like uh, what's the show we've been watching lately? Happy Endings. And there's like scenes where people are kissing and it's supposed to be passionate and it's supposed to be meaningful. And you're just like, oh, that looks like me trying to like 
if I like somebody forced me to kiss my sister or something, if I had a sister and like, you know, not being pleasant, pleasant at all. And I felt it though, with these two guys, I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, that looks like two teenagers in love with each other. Mm-hmm. Right. But with, the, but with this build, building love, like it's like even a straight relationship flirt, you, you yes. can start crossing those lines, but with them, they, there's been a line that you know, they wanted to even just inch cross, but, but they can't. Then they're terrified because something really, really bad could happen if they do. Yeah, man. Yeah. This is your real story because you know you said when Brian turned yes. his face away, you wanted him more. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just it's just like that. I just got the the, the kiss on the on the cheek, but it's like that was enough because uh-huh. like, uh, I mean, we, we we were both out at the time and had you know been with, been with other people, but this was like like the first time I'd gone through like the, the almost six month process of having a crush, having all the will they, won't they, the ups and the downs. And then just for the first time, just getting to do the little peck on the cheek. That was just so thrilling. Yeah, I agree. You know, I also noticed I, there's so many things about this movie, but the peck on the cheek that you're saying in Brazil, it, <laughs> that's everyone kisses each other. Like when I lived in Peru for a hot second, I was really attracted to my brother there um and every morning he would wake me up with two kisses you know, like your the morning brother? at the breakfast table my your peruvian brother? brother someone she lived with the family she refers to them oh, okay, my okay, hermano. Okay, okay. <laughs> and so he'd be like oh buenos dias and like give me a kiss and a kiss and i was like this is what and it's just so <laughs> common for them so when the boys first like kind of get to know each other or meet they just like shake hands and that to me was also like just so interesting and also builds the tension of like oh he doesn't even kiss him even though that's like customary there unless i don't think guys kiss guys oh it happens at some point well yeah i guess when it's anyways Uh, go ahead no that was it (laughs) i was gonna say and then since we were at the ending anyway and and speaking of the sort of just it ends happy and it's got this i love the scene of them like that final scene where that same bully is making fun of them and is like calling out relationship oh you your boyfriend, whatever. And he, all he does is just subtly move his hand from where he's holding the elbow to like holding his hand. And then they just, yeah. that is just mwah, chef's kiss. Like, yeah. oh. And then yeah. he's riding a bike at the end. <laughs> and you're like, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is what happens in the sequel. <laughs> well, well nice. I, I, I think the, the bullying, I think was probably the, the, the weakest aspect, aspect of it. But I like that scene, scene in the end. Cause then like, uh, so some of the other movies, you know, then they'd yell like like the F word or you'd see them get like angry and, and like wanting to be wanting to be violent. But instead, they're just like shocked. It's almost like because it's almost like, well, you know, that, that, that's just the kid who's kind of like like the bully kid. It's, it, he wasn't he's not homophobic or anything like that. There's no like that kind of hate in, in this movie. He's just the, the kid who's a dick that, you know, needs to needs to grow up at, at some point, but he's still too, too young. And he, so he acts that way. And so like. Yeah, when he sees that they're actually gay, it's just almost like his head can't compute because <laughs> yeah. he didn't consider And that. his friends turn and laugh at him like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, they, they sure do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Nick, overall, Matt, we give hearts out so, of five hearts. So we normally, and I, I'm trying to do this better where I don't make the, the guests go first because they can get a little bit of context. X out of five hearts, and then also, would you renew your vows? I tend to my wife may disagree with me i tend to use the x out of five hearts as more of a what i feel is like an objective rating of the quality of the film and then sort of would i renew my vows because it's usually movies that we've at least revisiting for one if not all of us it's sort of like does it still hold up would you continue to watch it again would you would you watch it again so for me (laughs) i'm gonna go with four out of sorry for the yawn everyone we're we're a little bit tired here four out of five hearts and then the, the part I'm struggling with is the would I renew my vows because it's such a new movie. Like right now, I have zero interest in watching it anytime soon because it was just like, it was a bit of a, a difficulty for me to watch. There's a part of me that wants to watch it again, though, because I told it, I said to Danielle, I was struggling at one point because the acting's so good. I felt like I was missing some of the acting because I'm a slow reader, yeah. like having to read just to keep up with what's going on in the plot. Um, so then there's another part of me that wants to watch it again. Um, I guess I'm going to say I'll, I'll renew my vows. Yes, I would definitely watch this again. Certainly don't want to do it like this week, but I, you know, if it came up another time, I'd probably recommend it and watch it with someone in the future. Danielle. 
four out of five is is really high for Nick too. He's usually very critical. Wow. Um, I usually give either a hundred or ones. <laughs> <laughs> out of five. <laughs> um, I I will give this a four point five out of five. I really really enjoyed this film, and I'm glad that you asked us to watch it. Agreed. And I would watch it definitely again. You know, the one thing I didn't really talk about that much, but like when you're watching a foreign film and then you kind of know the language. I picked up some of the translation was not the exact words that they were saying. And some of it has to do with like, because we don't have that in English, but also, I don't know, just the way that it was translated. So I would be interested in like listening to it again and like already knowing it's like watching the actors rather than like having to read all the subtitles. But I would definitely watch this again and I've already recommended it to some of my friends. I really liked it. Um, yeah, I, I would do a 4.5 4. also. I think it's close to perfect for what the film was trying to achieve. Um, yeah, I think, I think the main flaw is, is, is the bullying. It's a little bit like, like the 80s bullying character where it's like, yeah, uh, that, that, like, and it always really frustrates me because like, I felt like I, like I was bullied growing up and I, I think it's a real, no, it's a, it leads to, to teen suicide and so really bad issues that's still in American society. And so I wish films like portrayed it more accurately. Mm -hmm. um, but, and then, and then may, the other flaw maybe uh, is, is some of the dialogue lines. I'm glad you said that, that I had a feeling that it was likely the case that the lines either couldn't be translated properly or just weren't translated well. Silly, uh, <laughs> silly, silly, silly. Yeah, they said silly a lot. I don't think yeah. that was actually the word. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, and then there are just a couple of dialogue lines that would, like it almost took me out of the movie because like what that's it's like a really bad poorly written rhyme, line. But you have to remember a lot of times it's not the screenwriter writing these translations. It's just someone whose job is to translate right. between two languages, and they like they they aren't doing artful writing. They're just doing like a scientific process. So yeah, that's and that's always an issue when you watch foreign films. You you it's presented in a way like. Uh, you're, you're you're getting uh, the, the the art as it as it was intended, but you can't. The only way to do that is to learn the language. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah, I would definitely review my vows. I was re really interested to watch it again because I was just because I, I remembered all the main plot points for, for, from the movie, but I definitely remembered that the story was basic. Like I said, it's such it's a just very simple, straightforward story that 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 is well done. But I was like, but like. Since then, I've seen a lot more gay, gay content, and maybe you know more complex uh, queer stories. And so maybe you know I, I look back on this and be like, okay, for for its time, it felt more revolutionary. But now there's there's better, better things out there. But I, I thought it held up really well. I yeah, I don't watch a lot of queer films. You know, I watch a lot of Drag Race though. <laughs> <laughs> but I I think this one, like you said, and we already talked about, I enjoy levity, and so having good things happen to the character almost makes the story more meaningful to me because I would be very turned off if something bad, you know, it just. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I, I would, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but just, I, if you're listening to this listener and you still have not decided, like you had not watched it before listening to us, go watch it. It is definitely worth a watch. It is uplifting. It is positive. It is really good filmmaking and it's approachable. Like, I mean, I think people, you know, would hear, the, the phrase that it is queer cinema or they would see all the things that were recommended to you just because you watched this movie and would think like, oh, well, I'm not going to relate to any of this. And I, I disagree. Like, I think anyone who's of any sexual orientation would be able to relate very much to this film. And clearly we're talking about all of our experiences in high school in the United States. This film's made in Brazil. So there's some of those things that are also, uh, you know, translate across borders, so to speak. So yeah, definitely go yeah. give it a listen. All right. Well, then this is the time of the podcast where we give our plugs, right? Yes. Sure. Okay. So Matt, what do you got going on? What's in the pipeline? What, uh, what do you have to plug for our listeners? Um, well, you can see during COVID, uh, I, I used to use sketch, live sketch comedy uh, at, at theaters around Hollywood. Uh, during COVID, we did a much more digital uh, focus presence because that was the, the only option. Um, and so we're, even though we're, start coming out of COVID now we, we really like the digital stuff we're doing um so if you want to see any of the, the latest content we're making you can go to our instagram ooch comedy that's o-o-c-h comedy all one word and 
see oh, whatever, okay. see whatever st stupid poop joke <laughs> we, we put up lately. All right. Yeah. Which and comedy? That's nothing else coming up. Another pipeline. You got, got what? How often do you uh, all release videos? Uh, it varies. We'll have a week where we release four, and then so sometimes we'll go three weeks. But like, like right now, we're working on a Queen's Gambit musical parody because apparently oh, they announced that they're going to do a Queen's Gambit musical. That's, that's we, fun. we thought it was really ridiculous. So, but this this video has been more involved. So we've been working on it. We've been doing other stuff in the meantime too. But we've been working on it for over a month. Uh, but hopefully, we'll, we'll be done in the next week or two. That's awesome. I just followed you. Oh, All right. You. And Danny, do you have anything to plug? What's coming up for you? Yeah, y'all, I got promoted. So I'm on the next level of comedy sports. I'm in minor league. So I will be making my also digital debut um, in August. Awesome. All right. That's awesome. Uh, do, do you know when theaters are expecting to do live shows again? We have like co uh, comedy in the sport in the sports. Comedy sports. Comedy I don't know, I don't know. in the parks is happening right now. They're starting to do like smaller shows. So oh. we haven't, I mean, we lost our theater, our physical space. So I was going to say the city of Chicago, I think, is going to open up before mm -hmm. comedy sports will necessarily be. Second doing. City opened in May. So it's happening. And drag, yeah. drag clubs are open. I've been there. <laughs> All right. Oh, do you have to plug anything? Uh, well, I was going to plug this, basically. Oh. Uh, so, uh, if you're interested in more uh, movie content, you can follow me, Nick Loves Movies. That's N-I-C-L-U-V-S uh, Movies. And that's Instagram and Twitter. You can follow me for more information about that stuff. You can follow this podcast, uh, In Love With Movies, on lots of different platforms and spelled in many different ways. But this is our first one that we're probably going to go live on YouTube the same day that we have it as a podcast. So if you are watching this on YouTube, make sure to smash that like button. Go ahead and click subscribe. Share it with some friends. If you're listening on a podcast, make sure to rate and review on your favorite podcast app. It really does help us out. It's been a while since we had anybody who gave a full review. We do like to read those full reviews out if you give us a five-star one. So go ahead and make sure to do that on whatever app you're listening to as well. And uh, stay tuned for next month. I don't want to spoil it. We're working on a special guest talking about uh, pride in our country to celebrate with the 4th of July. Uh, and uh, we will see what that guest uh, gets lined up after all. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty big guest. It would probably be among the bigger guests that we've ever gotten. So um, stay tuned for that and make sure to follow us for more information. Just a, this is a short plug. That was just a little bit. Okay. Anyways. Y'all, it's I have to shower and go to bed. All right. So in that case, I love you, Danny. Love you, Nick. We love you, Matt. And we love you, listeners. We All miss right. you. Mwah, mwah. Hopefully we'll come to Kelly soon. Yeah. Follow us on Twitter at the letter N love with movies on Facebook at Facebook.com slash with movies and love and on Instagram and TikTok at in love underscore with movies. You can email us at with movies in love. That's all one word with movies in love at gmail.com to share your own love stories with us. Suggest future love topics that you might want to hear us discuss or just to say, hey, we'd like to hear from you. Hey, all original music written and performed by Danny Smith with our theme song remixed by Paul Brandt. And this whole podcast was produced and edited by my lovely husband, Nicholas Baldwin. And special thanks to Nick Stretchberry for our website and podcast art.